Welcome to True Crime Airways. Masumi Watanabe, a 21-year-old woman visiting Hawaii from her native Japan. She was last seen on April the 12th, 2007. Between 9 and 10 a.m., walking along Pupukia Road on the island of Oahu. Watanabe was a native of Sado Island in Japan. She spoke very little English, but she wanted to experience American culture and she chose the tropical island as a destination. She was described as a shy, artistic young woman who loved drawing and animals, especially dogs. She was close with her family, who were very excited for her to visit her other relatives on the island of Oahu. She was visiting Pupukia in the spring of 2007, where she was volunteering at Sunset Beach Elementary School. On the 12th of April, 2007, the day of her disappearance, she was last seen between 9.20 and 10 a.m. walking along Pupukia Road. Witnesses say that they saw Watanabe crawl inside a Hauli termite and pest control truck driven by a Caucasian man near the Pupukia Foodland grocery store. The witnesses also noticed that Watanabe looked confused at the time and she was not speaking to the driver, although they saw the driver speaking to her. She has never been heard from again. Watanabe's disappearance did not go unnoticed and the police got involved in the search for her very quickly. The circumstances surrounding the last time she was seen alive were extremely troubling. The good thing was that her abduction happened during the day and she was seen by a few witnesses. They eagerly described the vehicle in great detail and gave good estimates of the time and the location of the abduction. Police and the community conducted extensive searches for days, but there was still no sign of the missing woman who was now presumed murdered. They did, however, narrow down on a very strong lead. The suspect was an American man, a Colorado native who moved to Hawaii in 2002. He got a job as a technician with the Termite and Pest Control Company in August 2003. He was 22-year-old Kirk Matthew Lankford. He lived with his family on Haney Lane, a 44-minute drive from where Watanabe was last seen. Neighbours described Langford as a church-going family man. He had no criminal convictions as an adult, though he did have a record as a juvenile. He was seen by his neighbours as a deeply religious, church-going man, a devoted father to a baby boy and a husband to a very pregnant wife. He was known as quiet and pleasant. Langford was even known for hosting Bible studies at his home on Fridays. He even took his neighbour's son to church with him regularly. Overall, he was seen as a pretty nice guy. His parents defended their son when he was accused in multiple telephone interviews to whoever would listen. They claimed that he was not a killer. They claimed that he would give you everything before he'd do anything to harm you. They also claimed that the police were lying and trying to pin Watanabe's disappearance on him, strongly believing that their son was innocent. Langford's brother also defended him and said that there was no prior behaviour of him doing anything like this. But not everyone saw him as a perfect person. A witness testified about acts of cruelty that he witnessed Langford perform on cats. 
Langford's wife testified that her husband was very domineering, controlling and harsh in his treatment towards her. There was also a sexual assault case in 2006, one year before Watanabe's disappearance. The police questioned Langford about raping another small Japanese woman. The woman gave his license plate number to the police, but the police did not charge him because the woman in this case was not able to identify Lankford as her attacker in a lineup. At the time of Watanabe's disappearance, Lankford had worked as a technician for the pest control company. He was working in the area on the day Watanabe disappeared. Authorities found Watanabe's blood and her eyeglasses in Lankford's company truck. The windshield on the passenger side was cracked. The police recovered Watanabe's DNA off the truck's passenger door panel. Langford claimed that a bird had hit it, which caused the damage. A witness reported seeing a man digging a hole near Kahana Bay at about midnight on April 12th. This man claimed that he was looking for a gold chain that he had lost. The witness wrote down the man's vehicle's license plate number and it matched Langford's personal truck. The witness later identified Langford in a police lineup. Langford's wife initially stated that he left the house that evening saying that he was going to work in a side job. But when he returned, his socks were muddy. She later recanted her statement. Although Watanabe's body was never found, Prosecutors moved forward with arresting Langford and charging him with Watanabe's murder. Langford was arrested on a Thursday afternoon after a two-week search into Watanabe's disappearance. Langford reportedly asked for a lawyer when the police tried to interview him. Even without Watanabe's body, investigators believed that they had very strong evidence. On April 26, 2007, police charged the 24-year-old pest control worker with second degree murder and he was accused of either knowingly killing Watanabe or knowingly harming her and allowing her to die without rendering aid. Langford pleaded not guilty. Langford admitted Watanabe was deceased but he claimed that her death was an accident. His bail was set at one million dollars. The trial began a year later in March 2008. During the trial, Langford didn't deny that he encountered Watanabe that day. Langford said that he was giving the 21-year-old visitor from Japan a ride home after his truck accidentally sideswiped her when she stepped out into the road. He admitted that he slightly injured her, then put her in the truck to take her home. He claims Watanabe could not communicate with him because of her poor English and she became agitated and jumped out of the vehicle, hitting her head on a rock by the side of the road and died instantly. He then took her body, put her inside of a bag, taped up the bag and put her in a compartment in the back of his work truck for about 12 hours while he continued on with his day. Police showed footage of Langford shopping at two different stores on the day the 21-year-old victim disappeared during a walk. There was surveillance video from Home Depot showing him buying a shovel, gloves, garbage bags, duct tape and a flashlight. This was evidence of him buying supplies to get rid of the body. He claimed that he later dumped Watanabe's body in the waters of Kualoa Ranch. Prosecution experts at the trial described Langford's version of events as impossible. A crash recreation expert said Watanabe would have had severe injuries if she was hit by a truck, but Langford said Watanabe had only scratched her arms and her hands. The truck's side mirror and the antenna were intact and they should have been damaged if Langford had run into Watanabe, as he said. In addition, 
No blood was found in the truck bed where Langford claimed to have put Watanabe's body. No blood was found on the rocks in the area where he claims that she sustained the fatal head injury. He was questioned about him being seen digging at night. During a tearful confession, Langford said that he was only trying to give Watanabe a peaceful burial. After he was caught digging the grave, he said he dumped the body in the ocean instead. He explained that he did not call rescue workers or the police because he had previously been disciplined by his employer for poor driving and so he was afraid that he would be fired if he reported the accident. An interesting exchange happened during the trial when he told the jurors that he didn't appreciate how rude the police were when they stormed into his home to arrest him. He accused them of using the F word and the S word several times. He said they didn't seem to match respect, fairness and integrity. Langford also testified that he kept Watanabe in a box in the back of his truck for 12 hours while he serviced his customers in the area and even attended church. In April 2008, a year almost to the day after Watanabe disappeared, Langford was found guilty of second degree murder. The normal sentence for second degree murder is life in prison with the possibility of parole. But if the offender is proven to be exceptionally dangerous to the community, a harsher sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole could be imposed. Prosecutors initially planned to seek the enhanced sentence for Langford, but they decided against it in May 2008. This was after psychiatric experts determined that Langford did not have a significant history of criminal violence, which is a requirement for the enhanced sentencing. The city prosecutor asked the parole board for 120 years minimum imprisonment. Calling him a predator and a danger to the community, a state judge sentenced Kirk Matthew Lankford to the mandatory life prison term with the possibility of parole for the murder of missing Japanese visitor Masumi Watanabe. This tragedy is deeply felt by Watanabe's parents who do not believe Lankford's claim that he disposed of her body in the ocean. The Watanabe family believes that Lankford buried Watanabe's body somewhere on Oahu. They begged Lankford to show them where her remains were buried so they could return her to her hometown in Japan. The Watanabe said that they will return to Hawaii for every one of Lankford's hearings. In April 2009, a year after Lankford's conviction, the parole board sentenced him to 150 years in prison. Langford will have to serve a third of this, around 50 years, before becoming eligible for parole. Investigators did not believe that Langford dumped Watanabe in the ocean, as he said, since if he had dumped the body, it would have almost certainly washed up on the shore. It is more likely that she remains buried somewhere on the island. Her body has not been recovered to date. Watanabe's family continues to hope that her body may be found one day and returned home to Japan. Langford continues to deny killing her. This concludes the case of the disappearance of Masumi Watanabe, who is missed by all of her loved ones in this tragedy. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, kindly like and subscribe to be notified of future videos. Don't forget to leave a comment with any improvements or suggestions.